Alright guys, welcome to our first lecture in our series on HTML development. Now I know what you're wondering, what is HTML, this language that almost every single web page constitutes? Well, HTML is a markup language for describing web documents, alright? It stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and really all that means is that HTML is written in tags. If you look on your keyboard, you'll see your comma and your period. If you do shift comma and shift period, you'll see these two tags. This is what HTML is composed of, basically. There is a bunch of set words and content you can put, but the syntax, the main syntax is in this opening and closing brackets or tags. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open wikipedia.org and I'm on Chrome. So I'm gonna right click and view page source. And immediately you can see the entire code that's in this main page of Wikipedia. And you can see the script tag, you can see a meta tag, you can see a link tag, an HTML tag. All of this is JavaScript, but if you scroll down, you can see a body tag, an H1 tag, a div tag. And we're gonna cover all of these tags, but I'm showing you just to give you an example of how HTML looks like. Where is where is it used in a web page? For example, um, let's go ahead and see what a tag says. You can see that one of these tags is talking about Espanol. It's maybe a link to a Espanol uh, Wikipedia. And as you can see, it's probably going to be this one. Another neat feature of Chrome is that you can right click anywhere and hit inspect to find out where is this code inside of the view source. It shows you exactly that this Espanol corresponds to this part in the HTML code. So that's that. That's where HTML tags can be used. This entire content that you see on the Wikipedia page is created using a good amount of HTML, then their CSS, JavaScript, which we'll learn later. So before we get started writing HTML, we need a text editor, all right? Almost all programming languages require one. There's IDEs, integrated development environments that make it much more easier. But for now, we're gonna stick to a simple text editor. Now, most of you already have Notepad or Text Edit installed if you're on Mac or if you're on Windows. And I don't recommend using those just because there are other text editors solely for programming. One of them is Sublime Text, all right? Sublime Text is a great piece of software, a great text editor that a lot of people love all around the world. It has a bunch of neat things, you know, it can complete your sentences, nice highlighting, nice replacing. So go ahead and download Sublime Text. As you can see, you should get Sublime Text over here. This is what the icon looks like. And if you open it up, you should see this, this nice window which says Unitled. Once you have Sublime Text downloaded, you don't have to do this. You only need one text editor, but just so that you can play around. And trust me, these file sizes aren't too big. You can go and search for Atom. Atom is another really nice text editor. Again, in this course, it does not matter what text editor you use. It honestly doesn't. You can use Notepad for who knows, and it'll still work, and you'll still be able to do everything that we do in this course. It just might be a bit harder. You can go ahead and download Atom. Atom's another great tool, great piece of software. You can download different modules, you know, different things to help you along the way. I use Atom and Sublime Text frequently. There's not much difference, but definitely there's different customizations, etc. Now, later on the course, if you wanna take it one step further, you're saying that, okay, I got Sublime Text, I love it, but maybe you want something a bit more advanced, there is something known as WebStorm, all right? WebStorm is a great IDE. It's, you can write web apps, you can use JavaScript, CSS, and it's free for students. So if you're a high schooler or a college student, you can get WebStorm for free just by searching JetBrains, uh, I believe it's student, uh, free, free version for students. If you search that in Google, you should be able to get this fantastic software for free and you can follow along as we do this as well. So that's great. Now that you've gotten Sublime Text, Atom or WebStorm installed, it's now time to start learning HTML development. See you in the next lecture.